Hello, it is Monday, February 7th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Monday puzzle, so we'll have a nice, easy puzzle after yesterday's, I mean, quite frankly, brilliant, but uh, but also a big, big long grid. So something, something a bit breezier today. And actually, I see some shaded cells, so... As you may, as you may know, that's always exciting to me. Uh, and this episode, this is issue, this edition, I guess, of the Daily Solve, is brought to you by Kathleen Quinn, Skella Chicken, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you to the three of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve uh, Patreon campaign. And uh, if you'd like to join their ranks as benefactors and get that, let's check the crosses mug as well as uh, this recognition. You can find that at Patreon.com/DailySolve. And of course, at any level, backing the Patreon campaign at any level, starting at a few pounds a month of the equivalent in your local currency, you can get access to um, all of the bonus video solves that are up there on the Patreon feed, as well as uh, that additional channel in the Daily Solve Discord chat server. And thank you so much to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. I do very much appreciate it. And um, remain to the end of the video if you'd like to see and hear some comments on yesterday's puzzle. There are several. Um, as tends to be, as tends to uh, go along with that big Sunday grid. Plenty of things for me to misstate, misremember, or uh, simply not know. So uh, look forward to that. But first, let's solve the Monday puzzle. This was a crossword constructed by Rebecca Goldstein and edited as always by Will Shorts. I think this is Rebecca Goldstein's maybe maybe second or third New York Times crossword, so fairly... Uh, fairly early in her New York Times constructing career, although may well be an experienced constructor from other publications. I'm not sure. But what I am sure about is that we're going to solve this crossword right now. So let's get started. Okay. Uh, director Almodovar would be uh, Pedro Almodovar, who has a new movie out, um, Parallel Mothers, which I've not yet seen, but I would like to. Buds could be pals. Move some text around, say. Could be edit. Matching table and chairs in a kitchen. So it could be, they, they could be, oh, I see, right. I read this as a verb. We are going, we are matching the table and the chairs in a kitchen, but I think it's actually a noun. There, well, matching is an adjective and creates a noun. We are, we have a matching table and chairs. We have a dining set, maybe? There's also the phrase dinette set, but I think that would be that would be too long to fit in here. So dining set, maybe. Let's try that, see if that works. French farewell um, could be adieu. And uh, ba, 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 vintage inspired retro. I do, in addition to the regular Wordle, which I solve on this channel in my daily Wordle videos, I also do le mot, which is the French Wordle, the word that means. And I'm extremely. I am very poor at it compared to the uh, English language wordle, as you might expect. Um, but every once in a while, I use adieu as my starting word because it has four vowels in it. Anyway, uh, blank father who art in heaven, our father who art in heaven, first line of the Lord's Prayer. And here we have a good accessory for the owner of a shedding dog, a lint roller. Ah, and here we have, no, lint rolling. Why did I do that? Um, Lint roller. We have troll spelled out in. We have troll spelled out in um, the shaded cells. So look at that. I wonder. Now with that being troll and this, we have an O starting four shaded cells in this uh, twenty three row. I'm wondering if this is maybe going to be ogre. I'm going to, I'm going to put my guess out before I look at what the clue is because I'm wondering if we're going to have. Um, Oh, sort of fairy tale creatures, perhaps something like that, hidden in the um, in the grid in the shaded cells. So we had a we had a troll inside the lint roller. Do we have an ogre? Maybe nothing to write home about. No. Well, it could, yeah, it could be. It could be no great. What? No great matter or something. I mean, it could be so, no great something, and then we'd have an ogre hidden in no great matter. I wonder if that's, I bet that's what it is. Let's check the downs. Vegetable that becomes gooey when cooked could be okra. And uh, if one is snoozing, one is asleep. Hagar the Horrible's wife. Oh, this, um, that's funny. This came up a couple of months ago, maybe. Helga, I think. Uh, Hagar the Horrible, a, um, a newspaper 
comic. Uh, I don't know if it's still running or or what, but uh, the newspaper comic about a sort of Viking character, I suppose. And poets before could be air, poetic way to indicate before. Um, air I saw Elba, before I saw Elba. Uh, to damage something could be to mar it. And let's check the crosses here. Excuse me, ahem, that looks correct. And word sung twice after que, uh, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be, that song. So there we go. Sung twice, uh, the word sera. And non-binary pronoun could be, well, could be, I was going to say they, could be they or them. So I'll leave that, I'll leave that fourth letter blank for now. Middling, um, mirror maybe? You could say it's a mid, there's, yeah, uh, it, it works in some contexts, not all contexts. So it could be right, but let's check this cross. What a horseshoe is attached to a hoof. Okay, it's not mirror. Uh, middling, why don't I not, why don't I see this? Maybe it's not matter, actually. Right, I thought it, I thought I, that was sort of a guess, but I wasn't very confident. So what about this? Vietnamese noodle soup could be pho. Okay, so it isn't, it's not no great matter. No great things. No, we wouldn't be repeating things unless it doesn't sound like a phrase anyway. No great thing. No great, um, I don't know. What about this? Director Anderson. Now we've got another, um, Anderson. Uh, Wes Anderson? Yes, Wes Anderson. He also had a recent film, The uh, Paris Dispatch. Is that what it was? Yeah. I did see that. wasn't entirely enamored of it, but there were things I liked in it. Uh, hair removal option. I don't know. I wonder, maybe, I suppose this could be a different Anderson. It's a pretty common name. Uh, hair removal option. What is that? And, oh, middling is so-so. Okay, there we go. That that looks right. So nothing to write home about. Uh, nothing to write home about is no great shakes. Oh, that's funny. I <laughs> That was the first thing that I, I thought of when I saw this. No great shakes. But I'd, for some reason, I didn't say it out loud or put it in the grid. That's so strange. I have that experience sometimes, but I don't really know how to explain it. Okay. I mean, it, it still might not be the answer, but I, it looks like it is, doesn't it? One way to be taken. You can be taken aback. How about that? Curriculum blank. Curriculum vitae. A uh, CV or a resume in North American English. Uh, Dallas basketball squad informally could be... I think the Cavs, the Cavalier, uh, Cavaliers, I think that is, I think that's the case. I sort of recognize that. Somewhat could be a bit. Obsessive fans and slang are stands. This has become, I mean, I wouldn't say crossword ease because it doesn't come up all the time, but it's certainly, it's certainly a, I don't know, a crossword standby maybe. It's a, it's a, it seems to be a common fill is stand used in this, in this way, in the crossword. Um, raw facts are data and... Popular pie nut is pecan, pecan pie. And if one is prepared, no, if one, oh, oh no, sorry. This isn't the Cavaliers. I should never try and know anything about sports. Is it the Mavericks? Is it the Mavs? That's probably right. Sorry, I apologize to everybody who, <laughs> who supports either of those teams, I suppose, or any team. I'm sorry. Prepared to play rock, paper, scissors. Made a fist, I guess. Okay. Ibiza, e.g. to a Spaniard, would be an isle, isla, isla, isla. Oh, my pronunciation is so bad. Um, is that what it would be? Shakespearean king could be King Lear and a large group of ants. You could have an army of ants. I mean, there are army ants. Do you refer to an army of ants? I don't know. Probably. Starting squad could be the A-team, the first stringers. And... If one hits the accelerator, one speeds up or something. Speed. Hits the accelerator. Speeds. Hmm. I'm not sure. Let's leave that for now. What about this? Oh, here's our revealer. So our revealer, um, unlike how wh where it's often positioned, it is in the middle of the grid, the dead center, spanning the grid um, halfway uh, through vertically. And the revealer is the, um, it's the sort of theme clue and answer. It's the it's the combined clue and answer that explains what's going on with the theme in the rest of the puzzle. And uh, in this case, as I said, I think it's essentially fairy tale creatures being hidden inside 
other words with uh, in the shaded cells. So let's see what the revealer says. It says, emulated Dr. Frankenstein, or what you did after you filled in the shaded parts of 17, 23, 50, and 61 across. What, what I did after... Emulated Dr. Frankenstein. Oh, created a monster. Oh. Oh, this isn't speeds. Interesting. This is something with a T. Hits the accelerator. Ste okay, well, I'll look at that later. But for now, let's put this in. So emulated Dr. Frankenstein created a monster. Or what we did after uh, we filled in the shaded parts of these clues. So indeed, after we filled in the shaded parts of this clue, we created a monster. We created a troll. Then we created an ogre. And we'll have to create two more uh, monster creatures here. Move reluctantly. Oh, I'm not going to be able to get these out of nothing. Sorry. Let's just keep solving the crossword. So this is one of those... You know, there's sort of, I mean, there, there are many categories of themes depending on how you choose to categorize them, but one way you can categorize crossword themes is into two broad categories of themes. Well, may, maybe I'll say three, although you could probably choose two. You could probably choose two categories that include both of these. But some themes, you really need to figure them out in order to uh, solve the crossword. And, uh, Realist. I mean, you could solve the crossword without them because of crosses, but realistically, if you want to actually solve the crossword in a, in a way that you understand, you really do have to figure out the theme. Then there are others where uh, the theme itself helps you solve the crossword. It gives you something. Once you, once you know that, let's say, in every single shaded cell in the grid, there's going to be an A, you could go through and put an A everywhere, and it will actually help you solve the crossword faster. Then there are themes like this one um, in which you could solve the whole crossword and not even really pay attention to the theme pretty much and everything would just kind of work, right? I mean, you don't need to know this is Ogre in order to get the answer, no great shakes. And also it doesn't, knowing that these are monsters doesn't necessarily make it easier to solve this unless you happen to think of the right, um, unless you happen to think of the right monster to fill it in and then get, get yourself the, um, the answer. Anyway, I, I think realistically, probably the latter two of those you could put into one category. But anyway, are you serious? OMG, perhaps in text language, a short snooze could be a nap. One who might smoke ganja at a sacrament in, uh, sorry, as a sacrament it formally could be a uh, Rasta, Rastafarian, and a swarming pest is a gnat. So that looks right. Killer whale is um, a common name for an orca. And the locale of the perseverance Oh, Perseverance Rover. Sorry, I read that as River and I was confused. Uh, the Mars must be one of the Mars Rovers, of course, Perseverance. And Sparkling Italian Wine. Is it Asti or Asta? I think it's Asti. Free game activities in the parking lot. Yes, tailgate. Tailgates, tailgate parties. So when you have a pickup truck with a tailgate that's uh, lowered and uh, you have your, you know, beers or whatever else on there. Okay, Exuberance. I wonder if it's Elan. Kind of style and uh, it doesn't quite match though. Lavish affection on could be dote on. And hair removal option. Oh, wa a wax. I see. Yes, you could have a, a, wa a, a wax based hair removal. I, I, was thinking of a, I was thinking of a brand name or something for a substance like Nair, I think is one of them maybe. And uh, I was trying to think of that sort of thing. I was on the wrong track mentally entirely. So yes, indeed, a, a hot wax sort of hair removal. There we go. Okay. And here we have bagel and blank, bagel and lox, smoked salmon, an enjoyable breakfast, I think. And maybe exuberance is Elan. So style, panache, Elan. I think of it more that way, sort of style or panache as opposed to exuberance, which I think of as unbridled happiness, but I think there is an overlap between them. Just, does this does this work? Exam with a logical reasoning reasoning section it must be LSAT, the uh, law school admittance test or whatever it is. So it's, this one LSAT is a it's always a funnier and more straightforward abbreviation than I think it is. Okay, plant milk option could be soy, and a race with a baton could be a relay, and to leave out to leave something out could be to omit it. This looks like Gorgon, doesn't it? So this is helping me solve it, I suppose. Move reluctantly. Uh, maybe not. Oh, dragon. That's more obvious than Gorgon. What am I thinking? So to move reluctantly is to drag on 
I was going to say and on, but that's that's too few letters. Drag on endlessly to move. Oh, to move reluctantly. Drag. What? Sorry, I was. I, I I completely ignored the actual clue, and I was just trying to think of other things that start with drag on, but that's not not what it is. It's move reluctantly. It's not go on for ages, as I was sort of thinking. Uh, drag one's what? One's rear. One's what? What? What's five letters? I can only think of four letter things. Uh, what about this? Grab, snatch. Let's actually, sorry, let's just fill out this bit of the grid because we're almost done down here. Add in filming aerial shots. Drones. Yes, indeed. That has become enormously popular, especially I feel in television uh, filming. Club version of a song often is a remix version of a song. Some co-parents could be exes. You could have uh, co-parenting parents who have who have split up romantically sneaker giant headquartered in beaverton oregon uh looks like nike to me or nike as they say here in the uk um how great minds think it's uh, they think alike so that looks right and there we have it so we finished off that little corner of the grid what about this back of the neck the nape of your neck and motor oil brand stp this is this comes up occasionally in the crossword Head in French is tête, and as a reminder, uh, when languages like this are abbreviated, so French is abbreviated fr, that doesn't mean the answer is going to abbreviate to be abbreviated, even though that's usually what that means in a clue. With languages and certain other things like U.S. states and months, the abbreviation doesn't necessarily mean the answer will be abbreviated as well. Okay, drag. This looks like drag one's feet, but then again, it's not enough letters. I can only think of things that are too few letters. Drag ones. What is that? It's shortest when the sun is directly overhead. Sh your shadow, of course, is shortest at that point. Dish from a slow cooker. It could be a stew. And, oh, sorry. Grab is to seize something, to grab it, to seize it. A doofus could be a bozo. And, uh, View, uh, sorry, network supported by viewers like you is PBS, the public um, broadcasting system in the U.S. And poppycock is rot. What were they thinking, you might ask? And norms abbreviation could be standard standards. Uh, novelist Mario Vargas uh, Losa. I'm sure I'm saying that poorly. Oh, drag one's heels. Yes, drag one's heels. Sorry. That is, I'm sorry about that. That's probably the most obvious fill of this imaginable. And yet I couldn't, uh, drag one seals, of course, that's the answer. And yet I couldn't bring it to mind. It's just how it seems to go sometimes. Uh, hits the accelerator. Oh, steps on it. Oh, right. So I, I put in that the E for speeds here without ever checking the cross. Bad idea. Always check the crosses. Let's check the crosses. That's why the mug says that. Uh, okay, so ask intimate questions as to pry. There we go. And if one hits the accelerator, one steps on it. That looks much better. Needing directions. If one is needing directions, say one might be lost. And this looks like demon, right? Yes. And indeed, the June celebration honoring the Stonewall Uprising is Pride Month. So there we have that. And a comment from a stage actor directly to the audience is an aside. An easy mark is a patsy. And a treasure hunter's aid is a map. So there we go. There is the Monday puzzle. A nice... A nice... Um, nice gentle theme. We've created a monster. We've created four monsters. In fact, a troll, an ogre, a dragon, and a demon. Just like Dr. Frankenstein, we created a monster. Um, in this case, by filling in some shaded cells, I don't think that's how he did it, but maybe he should have given that a shot. And that's, that's the Monday puzzle. It was, um, I think, a relatively straightforward Monday puzzle. Maybe a few there was there were several uh, quite a few cultural references and those can those can be some of the easiest clues or some of the most difficult clues depending on how familiar you are with the person in question so or the person or concept i mean we had uh, pedro almodovar we had helga from hagar the horrible we had um what was this no we had nike or nike although that's probably pretty universally known um i guess we had uh, dr frankenstein himself although again pretty uh pretty universally known wes anderson um mario vargas losa uh the mavs which i completely uh, flubbed and thought was the Cavs. sorry about that again ridiculous um anyway uh, quite a few of those in this puzzle 
and those can those can go either way. Let me know how you fared with this crossword in general. And now let's discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. I'm going to put up the spoiler wall because uh, uh, I mentioned this yesterday, but um, someone requested I do this because uh, for people who choose to skip straight to yesterday's clues, uh, this will allow them not to be spoiled for today's puzzle. So I thought that was a good idea and I will I will do it. So uh, let's go through these. Uh, there were an enormous number of um, of comments on this video, uh, I suppose in part because this was such a clever theme and people really liked it, which I did as well. And Alan Morgan says, uh, with my comments on th on uh, theism around 1808, Alan Morgan says, you were thinking of deism. Exactly right. I'm very sorry about that. That's, I always feel very embarrassed when I make these sorts of mistakes. So the, um, the answer was uh, theism, and I described that as a a um, kind of belief in a non-specific higher power um, disconnected from organized religion. Indeed, I was thinking of deism. Theism is the broader category of religions uh, that include um, that God. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, that was silly on my part. And a few people corrected me there. Uh, Richard Lorenzen explains that a maser uh, is similar to a laser, which I, I thought maybe it was. It seemed similar. But I didn't know. I don't know what a maser is. Now I do. It's microwave amplification by stimulated emission of radiation as opposed to light stimulation emission in a laser. So that is very interesting. So we have a sort of concentrated uh, uh, radiation rather than light. That's very, absolutely fascinating. And, ah, uh, Duca, here's something I just, certainly that I know, but I, I just couldn't get there in the, in the puzzle. Duca Garland explains the connection between grams and nanas, nanas. I, I, I was thinking, what is what is the? I was just couldn't get away from gram as a um, as a unit of measurement. And Duke Garland says these are both short for grandmothers, grams or nanas. And uh, indeed, thank you, Duke Garland. I don't know how I how I didn't get there. Uh, Kathleen Quinn explains that men's ray. So that's M E N S space R E A. And I think I characterize this as something dealing with one's mental state um, around committing a crime. And I was I was on the right track, but I didn't have a very specific answer to it, to a very specific explanation. And Kathleen Quinn explains, this is the intention or knowledge of wrongdoing, wrongdoing that constitutes part of a crime, as opposed to just the action or conduct of the accused, right? So that makes sense. It is the um, knowledge that there is wrongdoing to be done and that you are doing it. All right. And any prophet explains that the three R's are reading, writing, and arithmetic, as if children weren't confused enough by English. Yes, indeed. Um, one of the things I've learned from uh, listening to the um, Lexicon Valley podcast for many years, which is a podcast about, it's a linguistics podcast. I think the host, John McWhorter, describes it as a podcast about language, which it is. Uh, one of the things I've learned from that is that the evolution of language is entirely arbitrary, and that any any belief that there are any sort of intentional rules around how language works are uh, that's entirely retroactively applied. It's all it's all essentially arbitrary. Okay, uh, any prophet also explains that a locus is where a bunch of points converge. So if you're in one of those, then points are all around you. That that makes sense. It's so funny. So the, this was something like points. Uh, points all around. And I was thinking, well, a locus seems like the opposite of that because a locus is sort of a, a single point. But yes, I understand. If you think of it as a place where the points converge, then you're sort of amidst all of that, the locus of all these points. So I was thinking of it slightly in a different in a different sense, but that's a very good explanation. So thank you, Any Prophet. And uh, Any Prophet also says, <laughs> Shinny is, uh, so shinny, I suppose, is an, is an alternate term for shimmy. And any prophet says it's technically in the dictionary, but no one actually says it. Uh, but then Dragon Traces replied to say, um, oh, interesting. I and my playground compatriots used to climb up tetherball poles to attach the tether to a ring in order to set up to play. We shinnied up the poles. I was long out of school before hearing the Mondegreenish shimmy. 
that the movements of the old-time dance, the shimmy, could seem similar to climbing using one's shins as a tertiary grip, it was almost inevitable that the word would be misapplied. It is likely the more commonly used word now. Kind of like, excuse me while I kiss this guy, <laughs> meets literal. So that's referring to the Jimi Hendrix song, uh, Kiss the, the Sky. Anyway, yeah, that's interesting. I wonder if that is indeed um, what happened. Uh, that does that does happen often when I mean, it's actually, this ties in perfectly to what I was just saying about language. It's all basically arbitrary. There are so many things, so many words that we now think of as correct and proper English that actually, if you look a couple hundred years ago, they were completely different. And it just, people just start using them in a certain way. And that just becomes what the language is. Um, all right. And Kathy Swope points out that HSN is Home Shopping Network, an alternative to QVC, Curate Retail Group. HSN and QVC actually merged in 2018. All right. I couldn't remember what QVC was. I thought maybe it was an, it was a televised shopping network, and it turns out it is. So there we have it. And pralines, I think I remembered them as being walnuts or something yesterday. But in fact, as Dances with Logic points out, uh, pralines are nuts with a crunchy caramelized coating. And these days, if the nut isn't specified, it's probably pecans. So not walnuts. But uh, Dances with Logic says historic and regional variants abound. So... Thank you. And um, I think that was it. There were there were quite a few other people who commented on s th those same topics, but um, but I think that was all of the different things. So that was a mar marathon correction session. Sorry about all of my uh, misstatements and misrememberings yesterday. And thank you as always for putting me putting me right. So I will be back tomorrow, of course, for the Tuesday puzzle. I do hope you join me then. Until then, please do um, subscribe to the channel if you. Uh, if you like this series, if you are new to the series, if you've just found it, a few people in the last couple of days have said they found this, uh, found that latest video on recommended to them on their homepage by YouTube. So that's extremely exciting. I hope that means that all of the subscribing and liking and commenting that you're doing is helping the YouTube robot think that maybe this is a decent series and, and it should be put in front of more people's eyes. So we can only hope. So keep, keep that up. Thank you to everybody who's done so. And thank you to everybody who's backed the Patreon campaign. I will be back tomorrow, as I say, for Tuesday. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Monday. Take care. Mm -hmm.